one of the most exciting aspects about Baldur's Gate 3 right now is character creation and the emotional attachment that you have to your character. And you are a big part of that. Tell me what you do. I'm a lead character artist here at Laren. Me and my team uh, work on everything starting from playable races to NPCs to creatures and armors. So uh, kind of everything that uh, you see on the screen that's like animating, talking, or making sure it's looking great. In terms of character creation, we uh, kind of build up a tool set to populate the game because, as you know, the game is really big. Uh, you can um, actually meet more than uh, like thousands of characters, like different NPCs, and uh, uh, we actually expect thousands of people to be able to customize their own story, their own uh, adventure, and their own personal look. So uh, we made up a bunch of tools that uh, help us do it. So you could uh, kind of like create yourself from scratch. You can uh, make uh, your character look like you uh, with our tools or uh, like kind of pursue the ultimate fantasy and uh, try to, you know, customize your adventure to your liking. Okay, so everyone's super hyped. The game is about to come out. What's your day one advice for making your character? You know, it's it's August 3rd, thousands, millions of characters getting generated all in one day. What is your day one advice for making your character? So uh, first and foremost, take your time. <laughs> Uh, it's going to take you a while, allow, well, at least an hour, you know, maybe <laughs> oh, to customize your character, to go through all of the options, to uh, try a couple of different races, uh, try a couple of, uh, you know, different customization options. What is the most exciting aspect of this launch for yourself? I think the most exciting is indeed to see people create their own characters and kind of to get excited uh, whenever they see an option that they really liked or they would prefer to have on the character. When we launch, uh, you know, like when we launched Early Access, I was like in every uh, video stream on Twitch, like even with like minimum amount of people, I was like there trying to like get to know what people want, get to know what people use. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really rewarding uh, to see uh, kind of people tinkering with uh, our things, uh, but also actually playing the game and meeting characters in the world and then talking to them and then kind of reacting to what they see, like to the stories that, you know, they create. Yeah, that's really amazing. I'm very hyped. Can't wait. <laughs> that's the, the exciting thing is I think we're just going to see all of these different characters that were made in the game being shared online. And I'm, I'm excited why everyone gets to see. I suspect oh, yeah. that you will be lurking, right? Yeah, I hope to see some interesting, you know, picks that everyone would uh, customize. Like uh, we have, uh, actually we keep a statistics uh, like of what the best, like the most popular player choice. And uh, uh, we're definitely going to post like the most, you know, the default of the default characters that people is going to pick uh, in our Twitter. Uh, but like looking at the statistics throughout early access, it's been very interesting because uh, like throughout our patches, uh, like player preferences actually changed. Okay. So uh, the first most default uh, character was like this white guy, you know, very handsome, like very classic hairstyle, all of that. But when we released Bard patch, uh, then like previously it was a human, obviously, but then uh, with the Bard patch, it was half elf. And then he kind of had a bit of a more fancier hairstyle, like this drow hairstyle. Yeah. That's uh, very, very curious to see, you know? <laughs> that is interesting. Like, I, I will, I can't wait to see the data on all of that, actually, like as that progresses, you know, as there are different options. What's the single most important thing that you found in your career in capturing when it comes to creating your own character? The most important aspect of making a character and bringing the character to life is actually the eyes. You look, you interact with people on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, you can spot when something is off. And uh, if the eyes don't have this like a small glare in them, then the uh, character that you look at kind of can seem dead. What we uh, tried to uh, make sure is that uh, you always have this glow in the eye in all of the lighting situations. We kind of had to fake it a little bit, <laughs> but uh, we could make sure that, you know, uh, you like wherever, uh, whenever you look at somebody, the, there is this like glow a little bit, and then you instantly get attached. And then when you look at them and then they start animating, start talking to you, then like you kind of believe them, you believe in them, that they exist. This is definitely one of the hardest and like, 
like, uh, you know, the main thing that we had to deal with. Well, there is a lot more, of course. <laughs> What's maybe something that people don't know about the process or like your insights into like character creation or NPC creation? Is there anything like a weird story about like character creation that you have? Well, uh, I mean, with characters, it's like a lot need to come together. And we actually work with a lot of departments, different departments that make it happen. Uh, we are uh, sort of the first ones. We make uh, the character, we sculpt the face, we like kind of model the body and the hair and the outfits, like all of that. But it's also very important to coordinate with uh, graphic programmers and with animation department and with lighting after all. Uh, I think uh, there are, there were a lot of back and forth with the lighting and like how the atmospheres work in game for us it was really hard to pull off like this very saturated and contrasted atmosphere both from top down and then in the cinematic camera so uh whenever you're uh like looking at something from top-down camera, it kind of uh, like realistically, it looks quite desaturated. So like if you, I don't know, kind of uh, gonna go up, uh, you know, top floor of your building, look down, uh, you might spot that the lighting is kind of flat. So uh, we need to compensate for that in our game. So we need to make it a little bit more exciting. You know, the grass needs to be a little bit greener. The shadows needs to be a bit darker <laughs> and all of that. But with the same atmosphere settings, when you zoom in on the face, it kind of looks like too much. So we had to figure out a way where we would have like slightly different atmosphere settings, like from the top down and then from the uh, cinematic dialog camera. Oh, interesting. Why do you love doing this? Because it's so much work and so much has gone into this game and now it's finally launching. You have to love it. You have to be passionate about it. Why do you enjoy this so much? I mean, it's uh, really exciting to bring something to life. And in my case, literally someone to life, you know, and you can see the process. Like if you look back at what we had, like uh, at the beginning of our early access, and I personally look back even before that, you know, at our first like proof of concept shots, uh, it was uh, much more similar to DOS 2 kind of quality. And then we try to push it and push it. And we try to really like embrace and achieve like this next generation kind of realistic really flavorful look of the characters and uh the process and like the kind of the destination was really fun uh we had lots of ups and downs you know we had uh lots of things that like were breaking constantly you know <laughs> we had to fix it we had to like make more stuff make new things uh but at the end when you kind of look back at the journey and then you look back at the results you look at all of the characters that we've made it's so rewarding it's like yeah i can't even tell you how like how happy i am you know to see the characters online and to see people like being excited about you know playing with them and like romance in them and you know creating their own little stories with the characters that we have were there any unique challenges into creating all these different uh, creatures and also kind of delving into you know the the world of dungeons and dungeons and dragons and all the different like species that exist and all the different monsters uh what was interesting about that challenge yeah so uh, i mean first thing that we did we kind of like got all of the books <laughs> that there are and uh, uh, actually a few copies and then we went through all of them we were like written up on creatures every time that we needed to make a creature or a monster we would check like okay how many tentacles does beholder have how many tentacles does the spectator has you know? yeah there were a lot of research uh, that we put in to make sure that uh, we are staying true to the lore and at the same time we were looking at like the visual and trying to bring it to the next level we kind of got inspired by uh, like everything that D&D has to offer. And then we uh, uh, kind of like turned it into what you're going to see in the game, you know? So uh, like, yeah, very exciting uh, monsters. We created uh, some of the uh, monsters that um, uh, didn't previously like exist in the books. So maybe they're going to, you know, make it <laughs> there, hopefully. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like there are armor sets, there are clothes, like Sometimes you see references in D&D art, but you've added so much more based off of that initial art direction. 
uh, what, what do you enjoy about creating those armor sets? For the uh, clothing and armors, we tried to show the class of the characters uh, through the armor a little bit. At the same time, uh, we tried to uh, kind of fit those outfits on all of the races and also represent your racial identity with it. <laughs> so uh, we had um, our armors. We have now vanity clothing as well that you can wear. Both are intertwined and like you can uh, be whoever you want to be. You can be a halfling, a gnome, a dragonborn. And then um, like you can play as a bard over there. Uh, or sorcerer and then in the game would kind of like give you um like you would you would find loot and vanity items in the game that can further kind of like embrace this role playing element and uh like really show your character it's so much what you do is about like attachment like you are making the npcs feel real to have an emotional connection what has been important about and fun about creating these npcs and making them characters that you care about and then also the monsters on top of that like they're you know, sometimes they have to be monstrous, but you have to add a human element as well. We talked previously and you mentioned lips are very important if the monster does have oh, yeah. lips. <laughs> uh, so what, what goes into creating those NPCs, those monsters? Yeah, we paid uh, special attention to our animations and uh, specifically lip sync. Because in the game, you can talk to anyone and any creature as well. So you can talk to squirrels, you can talk to cats, dogs. So uh, one of the things that we had to deal with is how do we uh, have animations? Like how do we lip sync the creatures that don't have lips necessarily? Uh, like dragonborns, actually, because dragonborns are dragon lizards. So it was really hard uh, not to just make the open and clothing mouse animation, like kind of like a doll. So. So uh, we had to kind of like force a little bit of a lip animations in there. And uh, we tried to kind of put in as much emotions as possible. So usually it's lips and eyebrows, even if, uh, you know, those creatures in real life, they don't necessarily gonna like have expressions with their lips and eyebrows. Uh, but yeah, we tried to uh, put it in because uh, uh, actually then you can feel like if they're like happy, if they're smiling, if they're angry. Uh, so it needs to show like without actually like understanding what they're saying. <laughs> Do you have thoughts? I know this is a bigger question, but like the the attachment of choice, because the, you are the very beginning of making choices in the game. What is it about choice that makes us so connected? I guess we're just defining and honing. Like what you do is to me very much inviting the player to have input into the experience. And then there's dialogue after that. Then there's choices of where you go. But you are the very beginning of this. Well, uh, what we try to do is uh, kind of sit back and uh, check if we kind of give or can give the option to uh, more people, to anyone, really. Because a lot of times you, when you're making something, you kind of can find yourself creating it for yourself, you know, like making what you like, kind of projecting your personal tastes uh, on your work. But uh, as a lead, I kind of try to uh, step away from it a little bit and really ask uh, for opinion, uh, you know, ask for opinion within my team and outside of my team and listen to what people have to say. Uh, because a lot of times you just might not necessarily think about something. You know, we have a couple of channels with like where people can share feedback and uh, requests sometimes. And sometimes I see some people saying like, oh, hey, like it would be cool if we had that or like if this character was looking like this. And uh, we pay attention to that because a lot of times it's just actually it's a really good idea nobody had thought about it you know nobody kind of paid it enough attention to like spot it in the npc that like that's actually like their character that's their story you know and we do that a lot so a lot of times we're like okay this is op this option is kind of funny it may might not be like you know the most uh pretty or the most i don't know beautiful option out there uh, but there's going to be somebody that would really like it. And we're like, okay, you know, if like, if we see that in our options in character creation, we just like add it in, you know? Is there anything within the game that happens uh, without spoiling anything that can also affect how your character looks like other than armor types? I know at the character creation stage, uh, if you true as dr a draconic bloodline, the scales if will be influenced on your character. And even if you're a dragonborn, there will be a melding of different scales on top of that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we expect uh, any alterations afterwards? Yeah, there's going to be some instances, some small quests that uh, could affect uh, how your character looks. Sometimes it is uh, temporary. 
Uh, so like, you know, your, your like character can get affected temporarily and sometimes permanently. So uh, there are certain things that you can uh, screw up in the dialogue and then you're going to have a permanent altered look of your character. It's not going to be like, you know, game breaking, right. I hope, but you can always save load. <laughs> but that's that's exciting to see that your character is influenced by that world as you progress. Uh, okay, but this is my final question. Is, just one, is there one thing you are the most proud of that you just absolutely nailed or or something that was just something you were chasing and trying to get right? And and right before launch, congratulations, by the way, this is this has to be an immense feeling or maybe you're just relieved. <laughs> it's finally you're finally shipping it. I mean, there are a lot of things that, uh, you know, that did exactly that. <laughs> like it's uh, origin characters. We had like a lot of um, back and forth, a lot of work put into them. Uh, Dragonborn race. Oh God, that's like, yeah, the most technically complicated race uh, that we ever made. Uh, very proud of it. Yeah, I think I think we did a good job and uh, like animation and technical art, like everything. And maybe the last and final thing is the genitals. <laughs> We spent so much time trying to hide them. <laughs> Would you believe that they always like popped up in the most weird places? <laughs> Shall I say? Yeah. Perfect. So that would be my top three. <laughs> that is the perfect note to end on. Congratulations so much on the launch of the game. I cannot wait to see how everyone reacts. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>